thing are not moving in sync the way that they should. There's, the song isn't right, so you move and it hurts. Okay, that's just one example. Okay, thanks for touching each other, you guys. That was really awesome of you. <laughs> Wipe your shoulder off if you need to. <laughs> okay, so that's number one. They create movement, and what I'm going to also um, talk about is one experience that I've had with an individual who uh, actually gave me this table. His name was Brian. Brian had a tumor removed from his spinal cord at age 26, and for the next 26 years, he went to doctor after doctor after therapist after alternative health practitioner, and he was trying to get resolution to this problem. He lost all ability to control his left leg. He could not move his hip, his knee, or his foot, independent of the other stuff. So he would walk around, and he would do this number. Brian had another problem. Because of that nerve damage, his intestines were not functioning well. So when he had to do number two, guess what happened? He couldn't control it. So you combine this inability to control your intestines with this crazy walk step that makes you walk really, really slow. Can anybody guess what happened to Brian on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. He had to do some scrubbing on himself from time to time. Um, so when I got a hold of him, you know, he had been so frustrated for so long, and he had... 26 years uh, with this problem, okay? 26 years. And now, you know, can you imagine the, the shame and just the, the, the humiliation of just walking everywhere you go and having people stare at you like you're some kind of freak or weirdo? You know, little kids pointing out saying, Mommy, what's wrong with him? You know? This is what's Brian's life. Plus, he used to have that accident problem, okay? No one ever told him about his body's song. No one ever told him that his instruments needed to learn how to play. So when he got to the end of his rope, he started to you know, think, maybe I need to exercise. So he went into a gym, and he actually met my friend Jay, who I mentioned earlier. Jay worked with him for a couple months, and you know what happened? Brian's song got a lot better. He actually was able to move his hip, his knee, and his foot. He had a little bit of a limp, but he was able to move. And he was able to get to the bathroom fast enough so that he wouldn't mess himself. After about three months, my friend Jay moved up to Connecticut. Brian started working with me, and for the next nine months, we worked on his song. And we made his song so good that he actually looked like he had somewhat of a normal walk. And Brian was ecstatic. He was ecstatic because he didn't have the accidents that he had. He didn't have to do this crazy swinging thing that was causing his back to start to hurt. And he didn't have to look like a, like a freak when he walked around. You know? So how happy do you think Brian was? Right? He was so happy. In fact, he gave me this table. That's actually Brian's table that he gifted to me in uh, 2008. So Brian was really excited. Now, now he, uh, he had that whole blue pill experience. You know, he was told by all these people that nothing could be done. He actually got help by dealing with something nobody ever told him about. Pretty cool. So, um, so a lot of you guys are not experiencing issues that are that severe, but a lot of you guys, maybe you just don't move as well as you would like. You know, it feels funny, it feels painful, it feels tight, it feels restricted. Well, chances are your song's probably not what it should be, and the only way to tune your instruments is with the checks and balances system that I'll demonstrate to you guys um, if you're so gracious enough to let me possibly run over just a hair on time. Is everybody okay on time? Is everybody... Has anybody got to be somewhere, like, right at 6? Okay, okay. I'm going to whip through everything as fast as I can. Um, okay, so so the second function of muscles is to stop and control mo movement. Okay, now I kind of mentioned this about the whole brakes on the car thing. So you got the gas pedal. That makes the car go. You got the brakes. That makes the car stop. Okay? Would you ever want to drive a car without brakes? Anybody? Okay, why? You gotta stop, you gotta stop. Otherwise, problems. Would you ever want to drive a car that when you hit the brake pedal, nothing happened for say three seconds? Would you ever want that? Right, no, it'd be dangerous, right? So we're walking through everyday life, we've got these muscles that are creating movement. Well, guess what else they have to do? They have to stop us from moving too. Because muscles don't just pull the bones together. They also stop us when we're going the opposite way because they pull against us and keep us from moving further than we should. Okay, so there are brakes. 
So just like you wouldn't want to have a car without brakes, you wouldn't want to have a body without muscles that can be your brakes. Okay, every time you take a step, those muscles have to be your brakes, otherwise you're going flat on the floor. Okay, and it's just one example. Sometimes it's a lot more subtle. You know, sometimes you're getting into certain positions, and sometimes it hurts, and chances are it's either because the movement is not right or because the braking system is not right. One of the two, but it all goes back to muscles. Had a client here, her name was Jana. Crystal actually referred her to me. She had an issue happen when she was out with her horses. She was trying to you know, pull her horse in, and the horse actually pulled on this rope that she had in her hand and yanked her arm back really far and jerked it. Okay, and what happened was she injured her shoulder. She had a big problem there. Now what had happened there is those muscles failed to provide adequate braking to the joint. That thing was being pulled and they didn't stop it and it went too far and something bad happened. Okay, Jonna started working with, with me with MAT and she was actually one of the um, people that I first initially started working with just this past year um, and she had some amazing results. She had basically all her pain gone, all her mobility back and she was able to go out and do those things again without that issue happening again. Um, so a lot of times people have these issues, you know, they don't have the proper brakes. Um, so one example, can everybody see my face? Okay, everybody look at my face. Okay, watch. Anybody notice anything? You notice my face shake? Okay, so that's an example of what happens when the brakes aren't being put on. Okay, other stuff has to stop the movement. And all of that momentum all that force has to be stopped by something else. Kind of like if you were driving in your car and instead of slamming on your brakes, oh, I'll let the car in front of me stop me. That's okay. I'll still stop. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good idea, huh? So, you know, now uh, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like with the brakes on. Okay, watch my face. See that? Everybody see it? I put the brakes on. The force, the momentum was distributed through my muscles. That's what they're there for. One of the things that they're there for. Is the blue pill kicking in yet? All right, everybody feeling kind of light and happy? Like, oh, let's touch each other some more. <laughs> Who said that? Okay. So, uh, who uses the brakes in their car? We already did. Oh, there's a pretty picture, huh? Look at that. Going 50 miles an hour, and eh, the brakes won't stop me. Eh, that Hyundai will. Nah, what the heck? You know, and sometimes it's not a big 50 mile an hour collision in our body. Sometimes it's a whole bunch of little five mile an hour collisions. So we're like, eh, this hurts a little bit. It's not that bad. And then over time, it's like, yeah, that's hurting pretty bad. Mm hmm. I can't do that anymore. That's usually how these things happen. Those are those chronic repetitive stress injuries I was talking about. Lack of brakes. All right, so alignment to the body. Okay, every time when I throw this word alignment out, everybody's like, oh, you do what the chiropractor does, don't you? No, I don't. I don't. Because I actually deal with alignment from the inside, not from the outside. Okay, so here's the deal. You got person A on the right, person B on the left. Which one do you think is going to have some issues with their body? <laughs> Okay, this is A, this is B, everybody. Okay, person B, okay, good job. So person B is gonna walk around and they're gonna be all out of whack. Their body's gonna be so misaligned that the stress that goes through their body is gonna be distributed unevenly. And what do you think's gonna happen? Well, right, something bad. You know, that's, that's pretty much the simple answer. Um, so has anybody ever had the uh, issue in their car? They look at their tires and it's like all bald on one side. It's okay on the other. Anybody ever seen that? Okay, well, I'll show you a picture of it because not everybody has. Okay, this is a misalignment to the axle. Okay, there's something that's not holding it in alignment. And what does that cause? Uneven wear. Wears down here, fine there. What's up with that, right? There's this mis- alignment to the system that's causing the stress to not be distributed evenly, okay? And if you didn't deal with that, you didn't fix that, bam, blowout, right? Okay, that's a pretty serious one, but you know, I had to hammer the point home. So yeah, it's gonna blow out, right? So, you know, a lot of people are walking around with these misalignments and they have no idea that they are so close to having a blowout. That's when you bend down to pick the pen
pencil up and oh, you're dying when you come back up. That's your blowout right there. That didn't happen <coughs> in an instant. That happened gradually over time. Okay, just like the misalignments that caused the excessive wear and tear eventually lead to the blowout. Okay, these things develop. Okay. Um, so a lot of people are running around out there saying, well, let's just replace your tires. That'll fix it. By tires, I mean knees, hips, shoulders. Let's cut out some bones in your spine, and that'll take the pressure off the nerves. That's just replacing the tires. In no time at all, those things are going to be worn down again, and you're going to have another blowout. Anybody ever had this experience? Anybody ever had a surgery that lasted maybe a little while, and then, then they had another blowout? Okay, great, good. Well, that's not what I usually deal with on an everyday basis. Most of the people that I work with have had one after another, and then they say, oh, I'm at the end of my rope because I've had all the surgeries I can have, and it just keeps coming back. Okay, it's the effect of replacing the tires without dealing with the reason why they were bald in the first place. That's what we're seeking to do with muscle activation. I put this in there because it's just kind of a cool visual. You ever seen a person lay on a bed of nails? Has anybody ever done that? No? Okay. Well, the reason why you can lay on a bed of nails and nothing really serious happens is because all the weight is distributed evenly across the entire bed. There's a whole bunch of nails to absorb the weight. What do you think would happen if you took away all the nails but one? Oh, oh yeah, everybody kind of had the little, oof. you know, yeah, man, that would hurt. That would go right through you because all the weight would be distributed on one little point. It wouldn't be evenly distributed. So that's what happens in the body. When you have this misalignment, the things aren't distributed evenly, and it's like one little point gets all beat down. Like when I deal with people, uh, and by deal, I mean help the people. I'm sorry, I keep using that word. When I help the people that have like arthritis and stuff like that, usually it's not the whole joint that's broken down. It's just one small area. You know, and if you look on their MRI report, it says like medial, anterior, which means like the front and the side. You know, it's like there's only one or a couple small points on the joint that have this really severe issue. And it's because the misalignment has caused this uneven wear and tear, which has led to an uneven wear pattern. That happens all the time. I threw this in just because I thought, oh, <laughs> I'm kind of worked like that. It's funny to have me see a little kid laying on a bed of nails. Although I think that the nails are actually backwards because I looked at this and it looks like the part that you hammer in is actually on top. So and that's why he's smiling. All right. So you guys know now about the muscle system. You know that they create the muscles create movement. You know that the muscles prevent and control movement. And you know that the muscles align the body. Uh, so... What I want to talk about now is kind of how MAT got started. Um, and it's a pretty interesting story. I think it's pretty cool. I tell it to a lot of people because I like to uh, you know, have people understand like where this stuff comes from. So Greg Roscoff, the developer of MAT, is currently the biomechanics consultant with the Denver Broncos. Um, now, if you're not a Broncos fan, don't like tune out everything I said because he's also worked with other teams. So don't worry. Uh, but he works with the Denver Broncos, and he runs a very successful practice out of Denver, Colorado, teaches a bunch of students. Well, Greg had an incident that happened when he was 19. He had a fractured vertebrae. And after that fractured vertebrae had healed, the bone actually mended back together. He started having one problem after the other. He started having uh, hip problems, knee problems, foot problems, back pain on a, on a regular basis. And at age 25, he's thinking, man, if I'm this bad at 25, where am I going to be like when I'm 50? So he started to seek out all these specialists in the field, you know, doctors, therapists, chiropractors, trainers, everybody that knew anything that worked with people with pain. And every single one of them had one common thing that they said was the cause of his problem. Now, I've told you guys about the blue pill, red pill thing. It was not muscle imbalances. You know what it was? Muscle tightness. Everybody said muscle tightness is the problem. How many people have ever told have, have ever been told muscle tightness is the cause of a problem? You ever been told to stretch? Been told to get massages? Told by this person, that person? There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but Greg didn't get the answers that he was looking for. Because as he went through these different stretching, massage techniques, and tried to loosen the tight muscles, he just got worse. And so the question posed in his mind of what causes muscles to become tight? And after pondering this for quite a while and talking to some various specialists, he had this kind of epiphany, if you want to call it that. He had a visual of somebody who walks on ice. How many people have ever walked on ice? Anybody? 
what, what's the first thing that you do when you walk on ice? <laughs> or, yeah, you slip, but what do you do to keep yourself from slipping? You brace yourself. Right? Yeah, you tighten up, right? Yeah, right? You tighten up because it's unstable. So your body naturally knows that anytime you have instability, you need to tighten up. Okay, so he basically took this concept of the person walking on ice and the body's natural response to instability, and he said, well, maybe there's some instability within the body causing there to be tightness around the joints. Tightness in the hamstrings, tightness in the neck, tightness in the back, tightness in all these places. So he started to look at all this research that had been done on the area of muscle imbalances and instability, and he found that there were actually a lot of studies that had been done over the previous 50 years that cited that muscles sometimes just don't work. They just don't work. And when they don't work, movement's off, brakes are off, alignment's off. So what do you think the body's going to do to try to protect itself? tighten everything up to try to make sure that it prevents any kind of injury. Okay, so he basically created a system to evaluate this and to actually correct it. He started to have a lot of success with this. He was an was a, a athletic trainer at Fresno State University. He started to have a lot of success with his athletes, ones that didn't have any results from his exercise programs, um, and they actually were breaking down. He got them to actually be able to perform again. And he got them to be able to heal from a lot of their issues. So he then became very well known. And he got offered jobs with different professional teams. He started working with the Utah Jazz. He was working with John Stockton, a couple of the other players. Um, none of these, these names may not mean anything to you guys, but he's, that, that guy is a Hall of Famer. And he's a very well known basketball player. Um, and, you know, John Stockton actually tells the story, and Greg tells it in internship. Um, about the first time that Greg worked on him, he said, okay, now I got this left hip problem, so I want you to, you know, fix my left hip problem. And the whole time Greg's working on his right hip. And he says, <laughs> why are you working on the right hip? The problem's on the left. So just trust me. This is what your body's telling me is the problem. And once you know it, that solved his problem. And John was like, wow, nobody ever told me that it might be uh, somewhere else that I'm having this, that the, the problem is starting. You know, so Greg was uh, basically dishing out blue pills left and right. Okay, and... So, so Greg uh, became very well known. He started working with a guy named Bill Romanowski. Anybody ever heard of Bill Romanowski? Mm -hmm. So uh, Bill Romanowski was a linebacker for the Denver Broncos, now a Hall of Famer. He plugged Greg in with Mike Shanahan, the then head coach. And Mike Shanahan met with Greg, like he <coughs> had to say. And he said, Greg, I want you to work with my athletes. So Greg started working with his athletes, and he started to have some really good success with them. And the success that he was having was so good that all the players started going to Greg. And then one of them, named John Elway, anybody ever heard of John Elway? Okay, one of them named John Elway, he was basically at the end of his career. He was, you know, really getting up there in age, and, you know, he had a knee injury that was basically, you know, supposed to sideline him for the rest of his uh, career. Um, and he was going to have to retire early, basically. So Greg got him on his table, started working with him, and he got his muscles so good at supporting that joint that that knee injury did not stop him from playing football. And anybody know what happened to John Elway his last two seasons? Two Super Bowls. Two Super Bowls. Yep. So Greg even has the two Super Bowls, in, uh, two Super Bowls, two Super Bowl rings that he shows people a lot of times when you go to some of his courses. And so Greg basically got to got got told that he was like the savior of the whole thing. Because he got the quarterback to play his last two seasons, got him to perform so well, despite the knee injury, that he won two Super Bowls. So Greg's notoriety just went through the roof. Everybody in the industry was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? We've got to be able to do this. And Greg said, well, you don't even know what I do or what I know, so how can I tell you what you should do? And then he started thinking, well, if I'm going to really help people with this, I've got to be able to teach it to other people. And this was about the late 90s. About two years later, he formulated his first uh, internship class uh, where he started teaching this to other practitioners, trainers, therapists. We even had some doctors go through the program, chiropractors and medical doctors. Um, and they started to learn this way to assess and correct muscular imbalances. And since then, he's graduated over 1,500 students. There's 600 of us in full-time practice right now. And the thing is growing by leaps and bounds. And this has only been around about 10 to 12 years. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, so Greg has just been very, very uh, successful in this. He's only about 48 years old, the most down-to-earth guy you could possibly imagine. I've talked to him a number of times. Really, really awesome. 
and um, just really has a heart for people and really wants to make a difference. I gotta say though, he's the worst marketer I've ever met because he does not help get the message out to the masses. He leaves it on people like me to do this. So I have to hold these seminars and I have to go and tell everybody, hey, you gotta correct your muscle problems. But Greg's all focused on research and development, making the service really, really good, so I can't really fault him for not being a better promoter. <laughs> yeah, have fun tonight. So, <coughs> demo. Do we have time for a demo? We got about five minutes. Did anybody else have to leave right at six, or do we have time for a demo? We got time. Sure? Okay. Who wants to be my guinea pig? He's got an issue that they're willing to show everybody. <laughs> oh, I've got a bad knee. Yeah, I've got a bad knee. Okay. Well, come on over here. All I'm going to basically do, I'm not going to fix you right now, okay? I'm, that's, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be probably a much longer term process. But what I am going to do is I'm going to demonstrate uh, what I do on an evaluation, how I find a place where you have these imbalances. So go ahead and lay down on your back with your legs this way. I'm just going to put this in front of this so that I don't get a light in my eyes. Okay, so okay, so. So you got a knee problem. Now, now, because she has a knee problem, I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, well, let's just look at her knee. I would say, okay, well, let's look at everything and see how everything's working because the knee could be compensating for something else or it could be just solely a knee problem. So I would look at a couple things, look at a couple different movements that she does. So I'm basically evaluating those three things. Okay, I'm evaluating the movement, the ability to, to stop movement, the brakes, and the alignment. Okay, so initially I need to see how well she moves in order to know whether there's any areas where um, she's not moving as well as she should, if there's any muscle imbalances in that area. So, okay, so I might have you do something like this. So go ahead and keep this knee straight and lift that leg up as high as you can, or that one. Wow. Okay. And now the other one. Okay, so those are pretty symmetrical. Okay, so, so now um, I want you to go ahead and uh, bend this knee. And I want you to just pull the heel in towards your butt as much as you can. Okay. And now this one. Okay. Not great on either one of them, but not really too much different. And I'm not really looking for, like, a certain amount of motion. I'm just looking to see if there's any differences. I want to see if she can move the same amount on one side as she does on the other. If she doesn't, then I know that there's a problem. So, so now, what I'll have you do is just go ahead and bend your knee, okay? and I want you to just turn your leg like this. Yeah, good. Okay. Ooh, a little hop in there. <laughs> and this one. Okay. And right here, I want you to turn in this one. Okay. And right here, I want you to turn in. Okay. So. A couple little things that I would probably flag. Okay, go ahead and turn in here. So, you guys can't really see this completely, like how far she moves on one side versus the other. If you want to see it better, kind of you can come up here. Um, but there's definitely a difference on this side. Can you feel that difference on this side? Mm -hmm. You feel that restriction? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's pretty easy to kind of sense that. So, she has a pretty big difference in how far she, her hip rotates on this side versus the other side. Why is that relevant to a knee problem? <coughs> well, what is the knee? It's this bone, the tibia, and this bone, the femur, where they meet. Well, what's going on at the other ends of the bones? This is your hip joint. This is your foot joints. So if anything's going on funky up here, you think that's going to affect your knee? Yeah, totally, right? So, you know, people go through this physical therapy and stuff, and they're like, okay, knee problem, so we're only going to strengthen the quadriceps and the hamstrings. And we're going to stretch this, we're going to loosen that, and we're going to make sure that everything that surrounds the knee is okay. Well, she's just demonstrated no imbalances in the knees, but a huge imbalance in the hip. So would I be doing her any kind of good if I was just focusing right here? Probably not. Maybe I would have to get to that. But right now, this is the thing that is shouting, treat me. Okay. 
So what I would do is, okay, I see this, this problem with rotation. So what I would do is I would have you get into some positions. And, and what I'm basically looking at is I'm looking at all the muscles that would create that movement. Okay? And I'm looking to see if they're functioning right. Okay? So I'm going to test one of them here, which is your glute medius. Okay? So what I'm going to do here, what's your name? Mary. Mary. What I'm going to do here, Mary, is I'm going to take your leg and I'm going to pull it off. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna. Make I'm, me taller. I'm gonna make you like this. Thing. <laughs> I'm gonna push your leg in towards the other leg. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. Okay, so I want you to keep your knee straight, and I want you to keep your leg turned, and I'm gonna say ready, resist, and then I'm gonna push you. Okay, so ready, resist. Same thing here. Stop me pushing straight across. Ready, resist. Ooh, that one. Ready, resist. Okay. So definitely have having a problem with the brakes on this one. Okay. So I would do the same thing on this side and kind of see what the what the uh, other side is looking like. So I want you to keep the leg turned out. Stop me pushing straight across. Ready, resist. Pretty darn different, huh, Mary? Mm -hmm. Now, you can really feel that I can push pretty hard on this side and nothing happens, and I don't push that hard on this side, and it just whoop, goes right over. So does that kind of make you feel a little out of control of your body? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? Yeah, the first time I ever had this done, I'm like, man, I can't control anything. This sucks. So, so you know, you're walking around. You've got this muscle that can't even resist against a tiny amount of force that I'm putting on it. What do you think it's going to do if you have something else that it's got to do throughout the day? Like put on the brakes or create a movement or align the body. You think it's going to do that very well? No, no. So what we would do, and uh, for the sake of time, I'll kind of use this um, isometric um, contraction. What I would do is I would put her in this position, and I, would, and I would have her push out against me. This kind of activates that muscle. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, Mary, is I'm going to have you relax the leg, hold it right here, and I'm going to have you push into my hand as gently as possible. Okay, you'll never hear that word from a trainer again, I'm sure, unless it's me, but as gently as possible, okay? So push out into my hand, this way. Yeah, with your leg, with your whole leg, go ahead and push your whole leg this way. Okay. Yeah, see, her, her, her brain does not even know like how to even get that thing to contract right. She's pushing down, she's pushing in, she's using her foot. So I've got to basically retrain her electrical system of, or her conductor of her orchestra to create this song, okay? So push out into my hand. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Real gently, and hold and relax, okay? And again, push right into this hand right here. Yep, there you go. Really gently though, really gently. gently, really gently, and relax. And again, While he's doing really this, I want you to notice how really her body gently, is bracing. And relax. She's trying to use as many muscles as she can because the one that he's trying to activate is so weak that everything else is going, oh, help, oh, let me help, let me help. Yeah. She's speaking from first-hand experience. <laughs> she is a competitor, and she's like, test it again. I can do it. I can do it. Give me another chance. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Let me wait. Hold on. Let me grab the table a little harder. And I'm like, yes. I feel so powerful. It is. Until you experience this, it, it's, it's kind of hard to believe. But once you go through it, it's like, relax. All right. So, Mary, we're going to test that muscle again. I'm going to push straight in. Okay. okay. You're going to push straight out. Okay. okay. I'm going to push the same amount that I was before. Yep. Ready, resist. Oh, solid. All right, go tell everybody about how cool that was. <laughs> you not set this up beforehand. I never even met her before. Okay, so that's what MAT is. It's a series of, of assessments, okay, via the range of motion and via the muscle test. And it's a series of treatments, you know, treating each individual muscle, making it work the way it's supposed to. How many people in here are kind of curious whether they have any muscles that are shut down on their own body? Oh, are you balanced? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're probably thinking, man, how many do I have? Well, if you could find one on her in less than two.